Blessed is the kingdom of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of God and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, the stability of the holy churches of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and those who enter it with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our Archbishop and Father Savas, the honorable presbyters, the diaconate in Christ, and all the clergy and the people, let us pray to the Lord. For our country, the president, and all those in public service, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this parish and city, for every city and country, and for the faithful who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For favorable weather and abundance of the fruits of the earth and for temperate seasons, let us pray to the Lord. For travelers by land, sea, and air, for the sick and suffering, for captives in their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and distress, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy upon us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever-Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life unto Christ our God. Lord our God, whose power is beyond compare and glory is beyond understanding, whose mercy is boundless and love for us is ineffable, look upon us and upon this holy house in your compassion and grant to us and those who pray with us your abundant mercy. For to you belong all glory, honor, and worship to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Ευλογή ψυχή μου των Κύριων και πάντα τα εντός μου το όνομα το Άγιον Αυτού. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all that he has done for you. Kyrios and Uranoiti mas en ton thronon aftu, kei vasili aftu pandon desposi. Bless the Lord, all you his works in every place of his dominion. Έτη και αέτη την ειρήνη του Κυρίου δαϊθόμαν. Αντιλαβούς όσων ελέησον και διαφύλαξον ημάς ο Θεός της ζυχάρητη. Της Παναγίας αχράντου υπερευλογημένης εν δόξου δεσποίνης ημών Θεοτόκου και η Παρθένου Μαρίας με τα πάντων των Αγίων μημονεύσαντες σε αυτούς και αλληλούς και πάσαν την ζωήν ημών Χριστό το Θεό παραθόμεθα. For yours is the dominion, the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, 
and to the ages of ages. Amen. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord in my life. I will chant unto my God for as long as I have my being. Macario suo Theos Iacob voithos alftu, i el pis alftu epikirion ton Theon alftu. The God who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them. Βασιλεύσι Κύριος εις τον αιώνα, ο Θεός σου σιών, εις γενεάν και γενεάν. In peace, let us again pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy upon us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Amen. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever-Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life unto Christ our God. Lord, you have given us grace to offer these common prayers with one heart. You have promised to grant the requests of two or three gathered in your name. Fulfill now the petitions of your servants for our benefit, giving us knowledge of your truth in this world and granting us eternal life in the world to come. For you are a good and loving God, and to you we give glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Wisdom, let us stand and attend. Sophia, Orthi. Let us worship and bow down to Christ. Save us, O Son of God. 
who arose from the dead. We sing to you, Alleluia. To the word co-eternal with the Father and the Spirit, born of the Virgin for our salvation, let us, the faithful, give praise and worship. Of his own will he mounted the cross in the flesh. He suffered death and raised the dead by his glorious resurrection. Hyper de doxas menos y Christe o Simon. O fustira se pigis tus pateras, Simon Themeliosas, que di afton rostin alithin in pistin pandas y mas o digisas, polies plagne doxasi. Together with our choir, please, the hymn of Pentecost and of Holy Trinity Church. It is on page two of your bulletins. Blessed are you, O Christ, our God, who has shown forth the fisherman to be most wise by sending down upon them the Holy Spirit. Protection of Christians unshameable, intercessor to our holy maker unwavering. Reject not the prayerful cries of those who are in sin. Instead, come to us, for you are good. Your loving help bring unto us who are crying in faith to you. Hasten to intercede. And speak now to supplicate as a protection for all time. Theotokos for those who honor you. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For you are holy, our God, and to you we give glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Amen. Holy God, you dwell among your saints. You are praised by the seraphim with the thrice holy hymn and glorified by the cherubim and worshiped by all the heavenly powers. You have brought all things out of nothing and being you created man and woman in your image and likeness adorned with all the gifts of your grace. You give wisdom and understanding to the supplicant and do not overlook the sinner, but have established repentance as a way of salvation. You have enabled us, your lowly and unworthy servants, to stand at this hour before the glory of your holy altar for offering your worship and praise. You master, accept the thrice holy hymn also from the lips of us sinners and visit us in your goodness. Forgive our voluntary and involuntary transgressions, sanctify our souls and bodies. Grant that we may worship and serve you in holiness all the days of our lives by the intercessions of the Holy Theotokos and of all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. Amen. Miguel and some less words. Oh, 
Again with power the enemies. Sophia. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, for you are just in all you have done. Sophia. The reading is from St. Paul's letter to Titus. Let us be attentive. Titus, my son, the saying is sure. I desire you to insist on these things so that those who have believed in God may be careful to apply themselves to good deeds. These are excellent and profitable to men, but avoid stupid controversies, genealogies, dissensions and quarrels over the law, for they are unprofitable and few. As for a man who is factitious, after admonishing him once or twice, knowing that such a person is perverted and sinful, he is self-condemned. When I send Artemis and Tychicus to you, do your best to come to me at Nicopolis. For I have decided to spend the winter there. Do your best to speed Zenus the lawyer and Apollos on their way. See that they lack nothing. And let our people learn to apply themselves to good deeds so as to help cases of urgent need and not to be unfruitful. All who are with me send greetings to you. Greet those who love us in faith. Grace be with you all. Amen. Peace be to you, the reader. Let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be with all. The reading is according to the Gospel of St. Matthew. Let us attend. The Lord said to his disciples, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hid, nor do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but on a stand, and it gives the light to all the house. Let your light so shine before men 
that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Think not that I have come to abolish the law and the prophets. I have come not to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Whoever then relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But he who does them and teaches them shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. and grant that always guarded by your power we may give glory to you to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit now and forever and to the ages of ages Amen. let us pray to the Lord Lord have mercy no one bound by worldly desires and pleasures is worthy to approach, draw near, minister to thee, King of glory, to serve you as great and awesome, even for the heavenly powers. But because of your ineffable and immeasurable love for us, you became man without alteration or change. You have served as our high priest and Lord of all, have entrusted to us the celebration of this liturgical sacrifice without the shedding of blood. For you alone, Lord our God, rule over all things in heaven and on earth. You are seated on the throne of the cherubim, the Lord of the seraphim, and the King of Israel. You alone are holy and dwell among your saints. You alone and good and ready to hear. Therefore, I implore you, look upon me, your sinful and unworthy servant, and cleanse my soul and heart from evil consciousness. Enable me by the power of your Holy Spirit, the best with the grace of priests, that I may stand before your holy table and celebrate the mystery of your holy and pure body and your precious blood. To you I come with bowed head and pray. Do not turn your face away from me, nor, nor reject me from among your children. But make me your sinful and unworthy servant, worthy to offer you these gifts. For you, Christ our God, are the offerer and the offered, the one who receives and is distributed. To you we give glory together with your eternal Father and your all holy good and life creating spirit, now and forever into the ages of ages. Amen. We mystically represent the cherubim singing the thrice holy hymn to the life giving Trinity. That we may receive all Let us lay aside all the cares of this life. That we may receive the King of all invisibly escorted by angelic hosts. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. We mystically represent the cherubim singing the thrice holy hymn to the life giving Trinity. Let us set aside all cares of life that we may receive the King of all. Having beheld the resurrection of Christ, let us worship the Holy Lord Jesus, the only sinless one. We venerate your cross, O Christ, and we praise and glorify your holy resurrection. You are our God. We know none other than you. We call upon your holy name. Come, all you faithful, let us worship the holy resurrection of Christ. For behold, through the cross, joy has come to all the world. Ever blessing the Lord, let us praise his resurrection. For enduring the cross for us, he has destroyed death by death. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your great mercy, according to the multitude of your tender mercy. Blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before you against you, you are my own by sin. And then that's evil in your sight, and I justify when you speak and blame your spirit.
May the Lord our God remember those who love us and those who hate us. And please lift up your hands. Cuando ni mon misti kirios o deos en ti vasia aftu, cuando denin que hay que esto se manas to neono. Let us complete our prayer unto the Lord. For the precious gifts here presented, let us beseech the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this only has for those who enter it with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and distress, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy upon us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Amen. For a perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless day, let us ask, O Lord. For an angel of peace, a faithful guide, the guardian of our souls and bodies, let us ask the Lord. Yes, Lord. For forgiveness and remission of our sins and transgressions, let us ask the Lord. Yes, Lord. For all that is good and beneficial to our souls, and for peace of the world, let us ask the Lord. Yes, for the completion of our lives in peace and repentance, let us ask the Lord. Yes, Lord. For a Christian unto our lives, peaceful without shame and suffering, and for a good account before the awesome judgment seat of Christ, let us ask the Lord. Yes, Lord. 
remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life unto Christ our God. Lord God Almighty, you alone are holy. You accept the sacrifice of praise from those who call upon you with their whole heart. Receive also the prayer of us sinners and let it reach your holy altar. Enable us to bring before you gifts and spiritual sacrifices for our sins and the transgressions of the people. Make us worthy to find grace in your presence that our sacrifice may be pleasing to you and that your good and gracious spirit may abide with us with the gifts here presented and with all your people. Through the mercies of your only begotten Son with whom you are blessed, together with your all-holy, good, and life-creating spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Peace be with all of you. And with your spirit. Let us love one another that with one mind we may confide. I love you, Lord. My strength, the Lord, is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. Christ is in our midst. Who it is? Tas tiras, and Sophia proskomen. Istavois eteon patera pankratora piti uranute yis. Oraton de panton ti auraton. Kesena kirioni sun Christon tonion du teu ton monogeni. Ton ekubatos geni tenda profanto tonionon. Pose kotos teon alitinon. Ekte u alitinu geni tenda u pi tenda. O motion to patri, viu da panda e geneto. Tondima aos tus antropos que dia te nimeteran sotiria. Cate tonda e ton uranon que sacrotenda e pneumato saiu. Que Maria se espartenu que na propisanda. Stavrotenda te iperimon e pipondiu pilatu. Que patonda e que ta fenda. Que anastanda te tri de mera cate tas grapas. Και ανεκτώντα εις τους ουρανούς και κατεζόμενον εκ δεξιών το Πατρός και πάλιν ερχόμενον με τα δόξης κρίνες ζώντας και νεκρούς που της βασιλείας που χέστε τέλος και εις το Πνεύμα το Άγιον το Κύριον το Ζώπιον το εκ του Πατρός εκ πορευόμενον το Συμπατρί και Υιός συμπροσκυνούμενον και ασυντοξαζόμενον το λαλήσαν διά των προφητών, εις μίαν Αγίαν Καθολική και Αποστολική Εκκλησίαν, ομολογώ εγάπτισμα εις άφασιν αμαρτιών, πρωτοκόν άστασιν νεκρών και ζωήν του μέλλοντος αιώνος. Αμήν. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages, light of light, true God of true God, begotten, not created, of one essence with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became man. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate and suffered and was buried. And he rose on the third day according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. And in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who together with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who spoke through the prophets, in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead 
and the life of the age to come. Amen. Let us stand well, let us stand in awe, let us be attentive, that we may make the holy offering in peace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord. It's proper and right to sing to you, to bless you, praise you, thank you, and worship you in all places of your dominion. For you are God, ineffable beyond comprehension, invisible beyond understanding, existing forever and always the same. You and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit, you brought us into being out of nothing, and when we fell, you raised us up again. You did not cease doing everything until you led us to heaven and granted us your kingdom to come. For all these things we thank you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit, for all things we know and do not know, for blessings seen and unseen that have been bestowed upon us. We also thank you for this liturgy which you are pleased to accept from our hands. Even though you're surrounded by thousands of archangels and tens of thousands of angels, by the cherubim, seraphim, six-winged, many-eyed, soaring with their wings. Singing the victory hymn, proclaiming, crying out and saying... Together with these blessed powers, merciful Master, we also proclaim and say, You are holy and most holy, you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit. You are holy and most holy and sublime is your glory. You so loved your world that you gave your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. He came and fulfilled the divine plan for us. On the night he was delivered up, or rather gave himself up for the life of the world, he took bread in his holy, pure, and blameless hands, gave thanks, blessed, sanctified, broke, and gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, for the forgiveness of sin. Likewise, after the cup, he took the cup, saying, Drink of it, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Remembering, therefore, this command of the Savior and all that came to pass for our sake the cross, the tomb, the resurrection, and the third day, the ascension into heaven, the enthronement at the right hand of the Father, and the second glorious coming of the Lord. Please bow your heads to the end of the next hymn. We offer to you these gifts from your own gifts, in all and for all. Once again, we offer you this spiritual worship without the shedding of blood. We ask, pray, and entreat you. Send down your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon these gifts here presented, God be merciful to us and save your for us, let us make bread. God be merciful to us and save us. And make this bread the precious body of your Christ. Amen. Bless, Master, the holy cup. And that which is in this cup, the precious blood of your Christ. Amen. Amen. Bless, Master, both the holy gifts. Changing them by your Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 So if any converge to partake of them, for remembrance of soul, forgiveness of sins, communion of the Holy Spirit. Fulfillment of the kingdom of heaven, confidence before you, not in judgment or condemnation. Again, we offer you this spiritual worship for those who are opposed to the faith. Forefathers, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, ascetics, and for every righteous spirit made perfect.
especially for our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary. Above all, remember, Lord, our Archbishop and Father Savas. Grant that he may serve your holy churches in peace. Keep them safe, honorable, and healthy for many years, rightly teaching the word of your truth. And those whom each of us calls to mind and all your people. And all your people. And grant that with one voice and one heart we may glorify and praise your most honored and majestic name the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. The mercy of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, be with all of you. And with your spirit. Having remembered all the saints again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the precious gifts here offered and consecrated, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That our loving God, who has received them at his holy, heavenly, and spiritual altar, as an offering of spiritual fragrance, may in return send down upon us divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit, let us pray. Having prayed for the unity of the faith and for the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life unto Christ our God. We entrust you, loving Master, our whole life and hope. We ask, pray, and entreat, make us worthy to partake of your heavenly and awesome mysteries in this holy and spiritual table with a clear conscience for the remission of sins, the forgiveness of transgressions, the communion of your Holy Spirit, the inheritance of the kingdom of heaven, confidence before you, and not in judgment or condemnation. And make us worthy, Master, with confidence, without fear of condemnation, to dare call you the heavenly God, Father, and to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Patrimon, o en visuranis, ai estito tonomasu, el teto i vasiliasu, genitito totelimasu, o sen uranok et fizis, tonar tonimon de fiusion, tos in sinron, piaf semin tautonimata imon, o skemis atim in sklep simon, let us bow our heads unto the Lord. We give thanks to you, invisible King, by your infinite power you have created all things, and by your great mercy you brought everything from nothing into being. Master, look down from heaven upon those who have bowed their heads before you. 
They have not bowed before flesh and blood, but before you, the awesome God. Therefore, Master, guide the course of our life for our benefit according to the need of each of us. Sail with those who sail, travel with those who travel, and heal the sick physician of our souls and bodies. By the grace, mercy, and love for us of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all-holy, good and life-creating Spirit, now and forever, <clears throat> and to the ages of ages. Lord Jesus Christ, our God, hear us from your holy dwelling place in the glorious throne of your kingdom. You are enthroned on high with the Father, and also invisibly present among us. Come and sanctify us, and let your pure body and precious blood be given to us by your mighty hand. Through us, through all your people, God, be merciful to us. Let Amen. us be attentive. The holy gifts for the holy people of God. Da'ya b'sayis. The Lamb of God is broken, the children are broken, but not divided. He is for every evil and never consumed. <clears throat> but he sanctifies those who are the faithful. I believe and confess, Lord, that you are truly the Christ, the Son of the living God, who came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the first. I also believe that this is truly your pure body, and that this is truly your precious blood. Therefore, I pray to you, have mercy upon me, and forgive my transgressions, voluntary and involuntary, in word and deed, known and unknown, and make me worthy without condemnation, to partake of your pure mysteries for the forgiveness of sins and for life eternal. Amen. How shall I, who am unworthy, enter into the splendor of your saints? If I dare to enter into the bridal chamber, my clothing will accuse me, since it is not a wedding garment, and being bound up, I shall be cast out by the angels. In your love, Lord, cleanse my soul and save me. Love. Loving Master, Lord Jesus Christ, my God, let not these holy gifts be to my condemnation because of my unworthiness, but for the cleansing and sanctification of soul and body, and the pledge of the future life and kingdom. It is good for me to cling to God and to place in Him the hope of my salvation. Receive me today, Son of God, as a partaker of your mystical supper. I will not reveal your mystery to your adversaries, nor will I give you a kiss as did Judas, but as the thief I confess to you, Lord, remember me in your kingdom. Behold, I approach Christ, our immortal King and God. precious and holy body of our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life and end of providence and peace. Give the most precious holy blood of our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.
gathered under your priesthood in this kingdom always known ever and forever. Deacons of the Most High draw near.
O oh God, save your people and bless your inheritance. Wash away, O oh Lord, by your holy blood, the sins of those commemorated for the intercession of the Holy Theophilus, the Holy Virgin Mary, and all the saints. Exalted, O God, above the heavens and the earth, the glory of the whole earth. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens and the earth, the glory of the earth. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens and the earth, the glory of the above of the earth. Blessed is our God. Always, now, and ever, into the ages of ages. Let us be attentive. Having partaken of the divine, holy, pure, immortal, heavenly, life-giving, and awesome mysteries of Christ, let us worthily live, give thanks unto the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy upon us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord have mercy. Having prayed for a perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless day, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life unto Christ our God. To you, o Lord. Thank you, loving Master, benefactor of our souls, that on this day you have made us worthy once again of your heavenly and mortal mysteries. Direct our ways in your right path, establish us firmly in your fear, guard our lives, and make our endeavors safe through the prayers and supplications of the glorious Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary and of all the saints. For you are our sanctification. And to you we give glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Let us depart in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, bless those who praise you and sanctify those who trust in you. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Protect the whole body of your church. Sanctify those who love the beauty of your house. Glorify them in return by your divine power. And do not forsake us who hope in you. Grant peace to your world, to your churches, to the clergy, to those in public service, to the armed forces, and to all your people. For every good and perfect gift is from above, coming from you, the Father of lights. To you we give glory, thanksgiving, and worship to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord May the blessing of the Lord and his mercy come upon you through his divine grace and love always, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to Christ our God, and hope glory to you. May Christ our true God, who rose from the dead, have mercy on us and save us as a good, loving, and merciful God through the prayers of his most holy and pure mother, the power of the precious and life-giving cross the protection of the honorable bodiless powers of heaven, the supplications of the holy glorious prophet and foreigner John the Baptist, the holy glorious apostles, the holy God-bearing fathers, the holy victorious martyrs, the holy righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, of the holy fathers of the Fourth Ecumenical Council and of all these ecumenical councils whose memories we celebrate this day, Saint Athigorienis, the holy martyr, Saint Iliar the hermit, Juliana the virgin martyr, the 15,000 martyrs of Pisidia, and the holy women martyrs who were beheaded, whose memories we celebrate this day, our Father among the saints, John Chrysostom, Archbishop of Constantinople, and of all the saints, 
through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. May the Holy Trinity bless and protect you. Please be seated. Good morning to all of you and welcome to this bright and beautiful day in Pittsburgh. I am taking things a little out of order today. You know that during the summertime, as it says in the bulletin, the, the homily, the sermon returns to its proper place after the gospel, uh, but I had to move it out of that. And even if I was going to do it at the end, I would normally do it before the end of the liturgy itself, but you'll see for a good reason, I think I had to move it out of that as well. So, the message and a few surprises today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. <clears throat> there are moments we will never forget. I'll never forget this one. Her name was Donna. It's not what you think. Don't worry, Professor Teda. <laughs> we were college seniors, very involved in theater. She had a steady boyfriend, and I wasn't even looking, so we were really just friends getting together. I invited her for dinner at my family's restaurant, and that's when it happened. Somehow, the topic of that pleasant conversation turned to religion. Now, I was born and raised in the Greek Orthodox Church, as you know, attended Sunday school all my life. You remember that story from last week, don't you? What happens when you misbehaved in Sunday school? And, uh, and I was, for the most part, what you would call your average Greek boy parishioner, right? She was a devout Roman Catholic, and probably more well-versed than I was in the faith, but we never got to that part of the discussion, actually. So she asked, in a quiet moment in the dinner, um, here it comes, what's the big difference between the Roman Catholic and the Greek Orthodox religions? Well, I answered rather nonchalantly, we believe that we are the true church. I'll describe what happened at that moment as a curious pause. Well, so do we, she said. And I'll describe what happened immediately following that as an awkward panic. And that was the moment. First, I was stunned. I said to myself, what did she say? They think they are the true church, right? And then I started to get resentful. How dare she? Well, I'm going to show her who's right here. But then came the paralyzing truth. I don't know how to do that. I could see the storm clouds kind of gathering above the table. And so I did the only thing that I could do to save the situation. I changed the topic. <laughs> so I preserved the dinner and the friendship, but I lost a precious opportunity not to argue or to convince, but to bear witness to a faith that I had allowed to become not a cross, but a badge, something I wore but didn't really have fully inside. It could have gone so differently. St. Peter says about those and other moments that call us to share or defend our faith, always be prepared to make a defense to anyone who calls you to account for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence, he says in 1 Peter 3.15. So I look back on that moment and I now realize I simply wasn't prepared. I had faith enough for myself, I thought, but I didn't have enough to really share with anyone else. Not to argue or to convince, but to maybe just maybe, open the pathway for them to the mystery of the kingdom of God. I didn't know how to share the hope that was in me. 
But today we celebrate the Holy Fathers of the Fourth Ecumenical Council and, and really all of the fathers of all of the ecumenical councils. And on this day, we remember the holy men who for centuries actually did navigate the church into that mystery through their God-inspired, let's call it, discussions, right? Interestingly, the epistle reading from today, from St. Paul's letter to Titus, reminds us, avoid stupid controversies, genealogies, discussions and quarrels over the law, for they're unprofitable and fruitful. Well, considering these councils or synods, considering that they convene for months at a time with huge issues to discuss and hundreds of representatives from areas, many of them infected by big, big theological problems and heresies in the early church and practices that just took people way off base in the central Christian faith, you know, that their discussions were, certainly their discussions were intense and they were serious. So maybe it seems that it's a prescription or perhaps a sort of a self-reflection of the church to say, oh, by the way, we did all that stuff already. Don't get yourself wrapped up in too much of that now. But they did really argue and they did really quarrel and they did really take us through many problems of serious issues in the faith. At the end, the important not their opinions that rule. It was the Holy Spirit who guided them to the truth, as we said today. So the epistle is not today speaking against speaking up, but rather about how we do it and why we do it, which is the really the focus, I believe, of the use of that word, pretty unusual in the scripture, stupid. I'm just going to pencil it down a little bit and just retranslate it as perhaps a more pleasant foolish. So we need to be willing to speak about our faith, but it's foolish to engage in discussions, especially with other Christians, for the purpose of winning or tearing down somebody else's faith as if that's going to somehow lift them up. So this is especially true in these days, a little sidetrack, when Christians around the world from many different churches are being beheaded are they having their hands cut off, are being thrown into prison, and are being persecuted, and socially, and even systematically. We heard about, if you were here for Orth, we heard stories again, so many Sundays that we hear these, of the martyrs, and today it wasn't just simply one person. We heard of 15,000 martyrs, and it goes to the point to say, they were martyred in one place. Take any 15,000 people you can think of, and imagine having them slaughtered for their faith. That is the real enemy that we face these days, not fellow Christians who have not yet come to the fullness of the knowledge of the truth. So as I often say when speaking to non-Orthodox Christians who at least share the common elements of God in Trinity and the incarnate Son of God, Jesus Christ, in comparison to that, we have a lot more in common than which separates us. After all, if we think that defending the faith, our faith, by attacking the faith of others is real witness, how does that fulfill the proclamation of Christ himself who said, by this all men will know that you are my disciples if you have love. However, it comes if we fail to bear witness to that which we just sang together with the choir, we believe is the true light that has saved us, as we do at the end of every liturgy, then we have violated, if we fail to do that, we have violated another command of Jesus out of the gospel itself today. You are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before men. Why don't we do that? Because we have not been prepared, as St. Peter has said, to give witness to that hope that is in us. Here's where it really drives us through, or should, to an even greater motivation. For others who do not have that hope, or who have not yet seen that light, we have failed them terribly. Not only in not opening those great big doors of this faith to the holy mystery of orthodoxy, but maybe even in their own minds, slamming it in their face. May God have mercy on us 
and save us from that judgment. So, I told you I have a message, and I told you I have some surprises. So the first of them comes now. And I would normally start to sort of wrap things up a little bit as we try to keep things, you know, efficient and clean and an appropriate time and so forth. But I'm going to ask you for a little indulgence this morning of time. We won't take too much longer, but I believe you're going to say at the end, this was amazing today. I'm so glad I was at liturgy today. This morning I have the true delight and a surprise and a blessing to share with you to let you know just how different this whole picture can be. What happens when we learn our faith enough actually to talk about it, to share it with others? What does the joy of that moment feel like when the person who has been asking us, tell me about your faith. What's different about orthodoxy? What do you love about it? it says to us in return, wow, that's what I've been looking for. And what's it like to have been standing on the outside circle so long when somebody finally opens those great doors because they're no longer afraid to have you there? Amazing things, wonderful things. We have to ask for, with us today five men and their families, clergy and others serving in ministries of the church, none of whom were what we like to call cradle orthodox or born orthodox, if there is such a thing, nobody really is, uh, but in other words, raised from an early life in the church. They are from a phenomenon that started back in the 1970s with a group led by the late Father Peter Gilquist of blessed memory and a number of others. It started with a group called Campus Crusade for Christ. Father Peter and some of his colleagues began studying church history and came to the conclusion having no church of their own, because Campus Crusade was really kind of a, a parachurch campus organization, right? That the Orthodox Church was the only unchanged and true church in history. The problem? They didn't even know that the Orthodox Church existed to this day. They found us in books. They found us in writings. They never knew that we were here. So. To cut to the description, and by the way, there are books written about this, there are videos on the web, there are sermons that you can hear, and my good brothers could talk all day, but they promise they won't about this. They've learned well what it means to be in the Orthodox Church, and not, and not in their old uh, days, right? But uh, anyway, they eventually self-declared to be a church, and they called themselves the Evangelical Orthodox Church. In 1979, but later, they actually ended up binding the Orthodox Church through a wonderful set of circumstances. And in 1987, Father Peter and other leaders of that group led 17 parishes from different parts of the country and over 2,000 people and mass into the Orthodox Christian faith. Lay and clergy alike received by Metropolitan Philip of the Antiochian Orthodox Archdiocese. This is very close to my heart because I had the wonderful experience I was sharing with my brothers yesterday of sitting as a senior seminarian with Father Peter and a number of the early clergy from that church at Holy Cross in Boston, and they're asking questions. What was I? I was just a seminarian. And these guys leading thousands of people in are saying, tell us about orthodoxy. We finally found it. We've seen the light. We want to know what it's all about. It was amazing. So all that was made possible. Because when the seekers came looking, the doors were open by Metropolitan Maximus, by others as well. And the conversations that happened led them to enter into the mystery. They were all part of that movement back in the 80s, and they all joined Orthodoxy together. They're here for a wedding today, actually, but I'm going to ask them to help me finish my message today. Because no matter what I say about it, right here is the living proof of the fruits that are born when we truly embrace the call to witness and accept in our hearts that it's not only for our salvation that this faith has been brought to us, but to, to for the salvation of those around us who so deeply and longingly yearn for it because it is so hard to find these days as the world around us continues and the churches around us continue to change. So I'm going to call them up here if I may, all five. They are. The very Reverend Father Leo, oh, by the way, the first 
four are from the St. Peter Orthodox Church, Antiochian Orthodox Church in Jackson, Mississippi. So please, Father Peter Shelver is an assistant pastor. Father Leo Shelver. Father Leo Shelver, an assistant pastor in St. Petersburg. Father James Meadows, also an assistant pastor. Come on up. Deacon uh, Terrence Algood. And then also uh, William Baker, a reader and chanter. He happens to be the father of the bride today. And then, saving for the last, a dear friend of mine who I've been, had many years of a relationship with, who was former director of the Antiochian Village Program in Ligonier, but now is the uh, director of the St. Herman House of Focus Cleveland. And so, we could spend, really, as I said, all day on these stories, but I'm, I've challenged them to do a uh, question and answer. And so, actually, excuse me. So I'm going to give them each a question this big, and I'm going to ask them to give you an answer this small. <laughs> because they're going to have to condense, like you've never seen in a can of orange juice, the essence of orthodoxy, like to so dense of a, of a material that you're going to walk out and say, whoa, what happened to me today? So I have five questions. I have no idea who's going to answer each of these questions, but they had them ahead of time. Uh, that's the practice these days, it seems. So I'm going to give them... I'm going to read the question, and whoever it is that has it, take a minute or so and answer that question if you would. So, first question. As Orthodox Christians, we are raised with the teaching, never leave your faith. So engaging in a discussion with someone for the purpose of finding another faith is unthinkable for us. What led you to do it? Send the deacon out first. All right. Flashback to Paul Poptis and his curves and his readings. <laughs> the questions came up right before the service, too. Um, why did I leave? Why did I leave the uh, faith that I grew up in? Um, first, uh, to tell you, I grew up in a, in a Methodist church. I grew up in Calvary Community, which is a small town out from a, a small community out from a small town of five thousand in rural Mississippi. Uh, all the communities in the, in the county were named for the churches that, that they were in. This was a Baptist. We went to town to the Methodist church. I had a community uh, in the church uh, in, in town, First Methodist. I had a small community uh, of friends in a small town, and, and we grew up with them. Uh, in college, uh, I came into Campus Crusade for Christ, and there was a small community at the University of Mississippi uh, there, again, a small community. And when we graduated, there were those of us who were looking for something more, and, uh, and we came into a community in Jackson, Mississippi. So the first reason was community. I was accustomed to it. I needed it for me, and, and that, that worked out well. Um, we became a community in Jackson. Uh, we became two churches, two home churches that combined into one later. Um, we lived within the same neighborhood. We committed to do that as we searched for what we were going to find later in the Orthodox Church. We didn't know lived about five, a five block radius right there in Jackson. And uh, uh, so community was important to me. And community played a big part in me coming into the Orthodox Church. The second thing was more. And you mentioned a minute ago uh, the encounter with a, a Roman Catholic. Uh, a priest uh, said to us recently, we came in contact with an Episcopalian. And he said, what's the Orthodox Church? He said, I'm Episcopalian. He said, well, it's like the Episcopalian Church, only more so. <laughs> and, uh, and it was the more so that attracted me to. Uh, there was a breadth and a depth and a width in the orthodoxy that I had not found in my growing up in the church I came up in, or in Campus Crusade, uh, or in the community that we that we evolved into. And so, uh, so more was was part of that too. A community that wanted more. And the third thing, the last thing, uh, we were type A's. I think most of us. We had a lot of questions. And over the years, this, this was like 17 to 20 years, you understand, we, we grew into this. But over the years, we had a lot of questions. And near the end of our career, a lot of milestones along the way. But near the end, there was probably a watershed moment for me. Uh, we were getting near to deciding to, to stay with the Father Peter and Father John and all these others. And they came one time, they came regularly to tell us what they had found out in their study. And they came one time, and we had a list of questions. It must have been three or four pages of questions. I mean, question after 
we had worked for weeks on the honing and convincing, you know, all these questions. And right before they came, one of my guys said, you know, he said, there's really only one question. He said, is God here? And so we tossed it for three or four pages, and we said, these men are from God, and what they're bringing you is from God. So the community wanting more and finding a place where God dwells. And that's the reason I think we came. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much, good people. All right, we'll take the next person, and the question is, we're told in today's epistle to avoid stupid or foolish controversies, genealogies, dissensions, and quarrels over the law for their unprofitable and fruitful. Religious discussions are tough. So what was different about yours, which obviously posed a lot of serious challenges to the faith that you previously held? Who has that one? Since Father I have a microphone, it's my turn. Please. <laughs> it's good to be here. Um, to answer this question, I kind of have to give a little background because it is exactly the process that explains this. Um, I grew up in a Baptist uh, background. My wife grew up Roman Catholic. And quite divergent backgrounds, as you can very much guess. Um, as she grew up, she just grew up loving the Lord, though, and grew up in the Catholic Church loving to go to the worship services. And she attended lots of times when others didn't, and, and she just really was drawn to that in the Catholic Church. In a minute, I'm going to tell you what caused her and myself to change on that. Myself, I grew up, like I said, Baptist. Uh, I, like her, never can remember a time when I did not believe in Christ because my mother and father brought me up uh, believing that. And I'm very thankful for them, who both of them are still alive at 90 and 92. And Christ has been the center of their life and their marriage of over 70 years uh, and is an excellent example to me. But as I grew up, I began to realize I, there were some things just sort of missing. Um, I can remember in my college days, I did participate in Campus Crusade. And it was like I was still looking for more than what the Baptist Church could provide. We met at a Bible study uh, in Jackson while we were in college. And it was with this group of people, Deacon Terry's already mentioned that we were all sort of seeking something that was more than what we had really uh, found to that day. Uh, in one sense, seeking the New Testament church, trying to find that. Well, we graduated, we got married, in spite of our different backgrounds, uh, moved to Austin for a couple of years, but ultimately moved back to Jackson because God was working in this, this group of people that began as a Bible study and ultimately became uh, a foundation uh, over time that became the church and St. Peter Orthodox Church ultimately uh, there. So what happened? What, what changed? Well, for my wife, what she found in the Orthodox Church as we went through this journey and made these list of questions and all, she found the real substance to the worship that she had experienced as a shadow in the Catholic Church. It's like she said, I, I Loved the worship, I enjoyed all these things, but it was just a shadow compared to what we have. Myself, uh, I found things in the Orthodox Church that was more of a hindrance. I could have had lots of arguments about why are the icons, the Virgin Mary, you know, all this stuff from a Baptist background. But, you know, I guess the soft heart, you make the questions out, but ultimately uh, it comes down to the Lord was here. And being an engineer, that was my background, what I studied in college, it hit me, it's not that the Orthodox Church has this box of rules that you gotta follow. They have this box of tools, tools for enhancing your spiritual life. Um, and these tools enable you to grow spiritually. And the Baptist Church, it's like we had a hammer, and maybe that's about all we had. You could <laughs> drive nails with it. You could take a screw and pound it into something. If you need to cut something, you could chip away with it at the end. But it wasn't the right tool for everything. I discovered this great 
wondrous toolbox in the Orthodox Church that we have the icons that draw us into the heavenlies, the incense, or the prayers of the saints, the Eucharist that nourishes us constantly, um, and on and on, I could just add the fasting periods that strengthen us, Holy Week, uh, Pascha, you know, the church calendar, I mean, just all these tools in this wonderful toolbox. That's what drew me, not, that's what solved all the arguments for me, uh, it, because I discovered more. And I guess that would be the, the, my answer to this question, is it's not, as, as you said, Father John, it's not the arguing with people, it's learning where they are and then tell them about your toolbox, about all the wonderful things that we have in the Orthodox Church that carries you beyond. And ultimately, it can simply be a, if the heart is right, come and see. That's what, and that's what we did together as a group. We found orthodoxy because God was there, and that's why we landed there. Thank you, Father James. All right, next one is, what was your aha moment that led you to believe we have found the true faith? Hang in there. There's still a little bit of good stuff to come. Our good reader and father of the bride. Uh, so I, I wasn't with uh, the group uh, initially. I, uh, I came along a little bit later after they already were established as the Evangelical Orthodox Church. And uh, like others have mentioned, I also was raised uh, in a Protestant background in the Methodist Church. And uh, as I entered college in the early 70s, I sort of, I fell away from the faith. And uh, it, I really did not have what I would have considered a strong grounding in the faith at all. Uh, but I did have one thing that I had always sort of been interested in. This is just, uh, just my uh, personal situation. I've always been fascinated and enjoyed reading history. I also uh, really enjoyed reading uh, works of fantasy. In particular, I was introduced to T.S. Lewis and J.R.R. Tolkien, and um, so this uh, this sense of mystery sort of became, you know, part of me. And um, I never could have probably explained it that well because, after all, it, it is somewhat of a mystery in all of us. But as I joined this church um, and start, and we started learning about the history of the faith. And I started learning about the councils and the development of the church doctrine and learning that, you know, the Bible didn't just come down and fully assemble, you know, in the first century and that it King was James a, translation a, also. Right, exactly. <laughs> it was a process that took place. And the way that we were taught about the councils, about the doctrines, um, it all just made so much sense to me, and it appealed to that part of me that was seeking for that pearl of great price that the Lord talks about. And so it just, it, it, it really, it wasn't, I didn't struggle with a lot of the doctrinal issues. They all made so much sense, the way that they were presented by the various teachers that we had at different um, seminars and um, lectures from guest speakers and stuff that um, I had no major problems with it but the but going beyond that so I, I can't say that I had like a single aha moment it was really more a collection of moments but as I have continued uh, learning more about the faith since I was chrismated in uh, 1987 along with um, my friends and um, clergy here I have continued to learn that there's a lot more about orthodoxy than I could ever hope to learn in my entire lifetime, and that it more than fulfills anything that, that I could even think of in terms of worshiping God. And so that's why I fully believe that orthodoxy is the fullness of the faith, and that's not to disparage other traditions, uh, as you mentioned in the homily. Oh. But it's, it's to also just recognize that there is a truth and that it's not just something that we make up along the way. Thank you very much. All right, two more and this is it. The, we, have a, we have a thank you and we have a challenge. They're both something I think you really need to hold close to your heart. So the, 
second to last question is, a person or a group out there opened the door to the mystery of the kingdom of God to you instead of slamming the door shut. If they were standing right here in front of you now, how would you thank them? Father James. Father Leo. Leo. Father Leo. Sort of, I'm like, I'm as nervous as a cat in a dog show. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up Roman Catholic. Roman Catholic, is this thing Roman Catholic? By the time I left college in 67, it was a long, long, far, far away. And I went to teaching and coaching and was drafted and went to Vietnam. While I was there, two people I want to thank. Whoever shared the gospel with me, some friends of mine that I met there, Every one of you. You say, how me? How me? You pray every Sunday for the President of the United States and our armed forces everywhere. Thank God. Because I was in a very, very, very bad place. And one of the guys that came around said, from 1 John 5, this is the life. As Christ is in you, you have the life. And at that point, I knew, I really didn't think Christ was here in me. And after a series of events and different things, I finally went and knelt down and prayed with that man and asked the Lord to be there. And make it real. Help me. And uh, prayed with him, and the next day I continued my usual routine, which was not a good routine, but in that, I felt like the Lord was right there and said to me, you'll never know me and keep doing these things. That was new in my life. Went to work the next day, same thing that evening, our relaxation. As I did that, the Lord said again, you'll never know me and keep doing these. Good. At that point, I put them down and I never touched them again. Thank God. And then when I came back, I was in an evangelical free church. I went to a Presbyterian seminary because I was looking for where God was in his fullness. And after I graduated from seminary, I realized during seminary that I couldn't be a Presbyterian because there was no Eucharist. Not that I even understood what it was at that time. And my wife and I were fortunate enough to have a friend who called us and said, hey, we found this little house church. Why don't you come and see what, what it is? We had talked about house church in seminary with some of the Presbyterians and people I was with. So my wife and I came in August or September in 1976, and we've been there ever since. We never left. Father Peter came, Father John, and then in the, in the spring, we heard about something in the newspaper, the One Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. And the guy, that one of the men that was with us, so the leader said, that sounds like us. Let's go see who these people are. And we met Orthodox. Father Paul Yerger, Bishop Dimitri from the OCA. And that began our 10-year journey. So you can see why I thank the man who, one, shared the gospel with me. This is the life in here. Where Christ lives, where the Holy Spirit dwells with us. And I thank you even though you don't think about it, think about your prayers from now on in the litany. Sometimes they can just go, they can hear. Pray for our armed forces. Because here I am. And thank God for it. And the other thing is that when you come, you can come, we can come to worship. 
we can come to the liturgy and we can sit at the feet of Christ and his Father and the Holy Spirit because God's good and holy and we love one another. Thank you, Father. God bless you all. I think we saved Paul for the closer because he's the only one left. Paul, in the uh, 1990s, Holy Cross pub Press published a pamphlet from a talk from Father Peter Gilchrist. I actually attended that talk in 85. It was, and the pamphlet was called Making America Orthodox. We haven't yet fulfilled that call. Is that still our mission? And how can we here at Holy Trinity Church step up to it? Thank you, Father. You're bringing it home here. Come on. <laughs> Waiting for the grand slam. I'll do the best I can. Uh, we all knew and loved Father Peter Gilchrist very much, and I can tell you, as sure as I'm standing here, if he were standing here, he would say, it is still our mission to make America Orthodox. It's the mission of every generation to make America Orthodox. You know, I think there's a couple of things that stand in our way in every generation of that, and that's unbelief and fear. Unbelief and fear. And if Father Peter was here, he would take us to the scriptures to address the problem of unbelief and fear. One, he might mention are the words of Jesus, who said that God the Father willed that all men would be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. If it's the will of the Father that all men be saved, then it has to be part of our agenda as well. And if we know God's doing his job, right? God's working in the hearts of men. So we have to be prepared to work with those that God puts in our path to lead them to salvation, perhaps by example, perhaps by the way we live, perhaps if the opportunity presents itself, inviting them to something at the church, perhaps inviting them to the liturgy. Another scripture and you need no, look no farther than today's gospel readings when Jesus said, you are the light of the world. You're the light of the world. Well, who, who are you supposed to enlighten? Others, men, the community, Ross Township, the North Shore, Pittsburgh. You know, I will tell you as sure as I'm standing here, and I grew up Southern Baptist, there's lots of Protestants, lots of Evangelicals. There's lots of unbelievers that are seeking something more. As sure as I'm standing here, there are hundreds of people, if not thousands, within a short drive of this church who would love it if you could figure out a way to meet them and they could figure out a way to find you. And Father, you need to create those opportunities. Going on in the scripture, it says a city on a hill cannot be hidden. Now, for some reason, because of your faith and your generosity, you have built this beautiful icon of the city on the hill, the kingdom of God, Holy Trinity Church. This is amazing to just be here and see this. But you know, this is what your insides are supposed to look like. The kingdom of God is within you. Your heart is to be this beautiful with Christ at the head. Just as we see him above us. Let your light so shine before men that they see your good works and give glory to God. So if you let your light shine in this beautiful temple, the icon of the kingdom, city on the hill which cannot be hidden. People are going to see it. Father's already told me that since you built this, you've got people showing up all the time. How are you greeting them? Right there is the icon of how to greet them. <laughs> you know, there's sort of a, a double thing going on with the flock of Terah. Mary more spacious than the heaven. She's revealing Christ and she Arms, everyone who would come to him and who 
receive salvation and the knowledge of the truth. I could go on and on, but I won't. But the fact, I will say one last thing. And my dad articulated it to me, an experience he had in our church. The Orthodox Church still believes that God is holy and holds him in awe. You'd be hard-pressed to find that anywhere else. Thank you, Father. God bless you, my good brothers. Thank you for the joy of sharing your heart and your faith, even sometimes almost your tears with us today. I ask you to please, I know you're getting ready for a wedding, but if you could please, after we distribute the Ambidron, if we could please have you join us for a little bit of coffee hour so people can greet you and join uh, and, and, and further talk to you about it. Amen.